this will be a New Game Pro Spearing Guide for Resident Evil 4. Uh, the first thing I'm going to cover is um, if you're using an Xbox One controller, these are the. Um, well, first off, let me show you how to get to this point. So, so hit the window key, then E. Go to your local disk, your main hard drive, or whatever your, wherever your Resident Evil 4 is stored, program files, Steam, Steam apps, common. Go to Resident Evil 4, buy all four. And then right here is where uh, all the uh, settings are for your, uh, to change for your inputs on your Xbox One controller. Or PS4, PS5, PS3, whatever you're using. Um, and also for mouse and keyboard. So. But this guy will mostly be played on a Xbox One controller. There's only a couple of sections of the game I even use the mouse, so. This will be mainly for uh, Xbox One. So, um, when you open this, um, it won't quite look like what I have here. So basically just uh, look at what I have. Like for example, uh, this allows uh, B, uh, QEGCB4 is uh, the A button. And this is a, a forward button, like a forward on the stick or something. So having this up here beside this allows you to have uh, what's called auto run. So you don't have to hold A um, hold A and push forward on the stick at the same time. So, and this down here sets up multiple cutscene skip buttons. Um, there's a few in here that sets up another interact button that'll be useful for wrecking ball room. Um, but yeah, so just, just copy these down uh, before getting started. Or you can, you can join the um, RE4 speedrun discord and uh, and get this uh, this file here and then just uh, replace your vanilla file with this but before you do that make sure you back up your uh, your vanilla just in case you want to um, you decide down the road you want to change something so so that pretty much covers the uh, the inputs and whatnot. So the next thing I'm going to cover is uh, quick turning and text canceling with items. So throughout the run, we're going to be picking up a lot of items. So a good place to be to practice um, uh, text canceling is mercenaries. So just go into uh, mercenaries mode, pick whatever character, whatever level. Um, I prefer castle myself because it's more it's smaller and condensed and yeah but uh but this is what it looks like picking up an an item normally like just mashing X it, it, it's a bit fast but it's not as fast as doing the text cancel method So just kill a bunch of enemies. See how that's a little bit faster? Especially those two. And you can see the inputs I do. So basically I run up to an item and uh, I hit X and then A then X. I push my thumb over A then X. Um, you can do it that way or um, I guess I can show my controller real quick so I can demonstrate that a little bit better so I don't know why my controller isn't showing one second hmm. is it not popping up oh never mind I'm crazy for some reason <laughs> I didn't Whatever. Anyway, 
Um, so when you're running up to an item, um, I hit X and then push A then X. So in fast motion it looks like this, like that. Or you can do it like this, pushing your thumb backward. Or do it the way I do it. That's how it looks in slow motion. So, like that. So I just go into mercenaries mode and kill a bunch of enemies and. But yeah. It's better than just trying to do it in runs and whatnot. It will, uh. Oh, and also, too, this is quick turning. So basically, just move the camera at a 90 degree angle and uh, press the aim button. That's just what I was demonstrating there. I'll show a few more and then we'll move on to the village segment. Sometimes you can mess it up, that's fine. You have to pick up a lot of items in the game and it's really easy to screw that up. But yeah, so next we'll, we'll I'll, I'm going to cover, uh, I have a pre-recorded uh, video of doing um, Village. That's from a run a while back that ended up dying, unfortunately. Um, so I'll be showing this as an example and just talking over it. Rather than trying to play and then explain at the same time, it just, I've tried that in the past, it doesn't work well for me. So in this video, I I get a crit here. Normally, ninety percent of the time you don't do get that, and um, you just shoot them four times, run forward a little bit, and then reload. And uh, that'll cause a reload cancel. Uh, the cutscene will cancel the reload animation. Um, and there's several different ways of uh, canceling the reload animation. So. And that's one of them. But here we don't reload, uh, especially as long as we have over uh, eight bullets. If you have seven, uh, you have to reset because we have to shoot the bird and you need seven rounds in the next room. So if you just fired two bullets here, you're fine if you get the crit. So I'll just run forward and skip the cutscene. I almost forgot to turn on the audio. I did that one other time. I, I did this whole freaking thing. And um, I forgot to turn the audio on. So I recorded a whole village tutorial and didn't record. This is, this, I think this is like the third time I've done this. But anyway. Um, <laughs> so right here we have shoot this bird. And this bird always drops a, a grenade. So we pick up that grenade. And the reason for equipping the grenade is so that we run slightly faster. So having a grenade equipped or Leon's hands are empty or having a rocket launcher equipped, um, you'll move slightly faster. And it's very noticeable along a, uh, in a room that she, uh, that's a, a pretty long run. Like if I were to had the handgun equipped here still, I'd probably lose like two seconds or so. So coming up is the first uh first hurdle of learning this game. Not this, but 
Right here, you're going to get an interact. Uh, we use that to teleport Leon forward a few feet, save it by the second. So right here, I stop about right here, and be sure to uh, stop behind these uh, logs. And if you don't stop behind these logs and start shooting, it'll screw up the room. So uh, anywhere behind these logs is fine. And then we're going to shoot the wheelbarrow guy seven times. And right here, I'm going to I rearrange my inventory. So, um, we have this whole row here for the shotgun. If we don't move this fast up, um, it'll cause the shotgun to go in this row here. We don't want that. We want to keep our inventory neat and clean. Um, if you don't pay attention to your inventory and try to keep it um, neat throughout the run, you'll end up losing minutes throughout the run because every time you do a run, your inventory is going to be a bit different and a lot more you know cluttered in a different way so you're going to be having to open your inventory and look for whatever you need like for example you get to a certain point of the run where you need a flash grenade and sometimes your flash is over here or it's way over here so you're sitting in your inventory you know looking for your flash and then equipping it and you lose like four or five seconds compared to um, always having it in the same place every time and it only takes you a fraction of a second to equip your grenade. So very important, um, probably definitely one of the most important things to uh, get a grip on is uh, uh, inventory management for sure. This is the trickiest part of the room. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain this, but basically we throw the grenade through this tiny window and it's not the easiest thing to do, but with a little practice, um, uh, it'll be super consistent. You'll, you'll get it about nine times out of 10. Every once in a while you'll bonk it off the wall here, but it happens. And if that were to happen, uh, you have to reset the room or your whole run because you lose uh, well, 20 seconds or 25. Shotgun, grenade. So we're about to throw a second grenade because we have to kill. Whoops. So we have to kill um, a minimum of 16 enemies in the in this room to trigger the cutscene so we can move on. So we're going to throw a grenade here. I'm, I'm going to aim down directly at the ground and then throw it. And then I'm going to run along this fence here for one or two steps and then jump over. So, uh, um, and the reasoning for that is, is if you jump over the fence immediately after throwing the grenade, there's a chance um, you'll lose all your iframes and then get blown up by your own grenade. So running along this fence letting the grenade cook for a little bit and then jumping over you get the um, Leon will always have the iframes we'll see that just like that and then reload before the cutscene you see money and it's in your path like right here or over here um, pick it up always pick up money if it's uh, in your way So here we're going to get a treasure. Don't let it fall in the dirty water. If you let that fall in the dirty water, you have to re reset the room. Because if you get the dirty pendant, it'll be worth uh, 9,000 less. So this is uh, one of many uh, QTs in this game from an era of video games where there's every game had a QT at some point kind of unfortunate but <laughs> it's a, it's, yeah this game came out around like when God of War came out and stuff like that so there's a lot of mashing QTs 
this room always plays out the same. Really, nothing much to talk about here. Always pick up... The only reason you shouldn't pick up that handgun ammo is if you picked up handgun ammo in the room before um, in Village. And then you can skip that handgun, but otherwise you need to always pick up that handgun. So right here we're going to pick up rifle ammo. Careful with this rifle ammo pickup. Try to rub up against that box a little bit. Um, like how I did. Take it from a distance rather than waiting till you're right next to it because you take the risk of hitting that, uh, that typewriter. So this room we're just racing to get the uh, two halves of the of the key that we need to open the door. So this part right here, this part of the room is where it can get weird. Sometimes you get two guys here. If that happens, you shoot this guy in the head, go for a kick. If you see a guy right here, which happens sometimes, shoot him in the head, go for a kick. Don't try to just dodge them if you're just getting started. So, uh, yeah, but right here, this it'll play out like this like most of the time, but on occasion you'll get a weird pattern, so if you get that, just go for a kick. So right here, I'm, me personally, I'm, I'm comfortable with, the, uh, with all the patterns this guy can do, so I'm able to adapt to it. But starting out, I'd recommend just shooting this red barrel every time until you sort of uh, comfortable with the, the different things this, this zombie can do. Um, if he's like all the way over here, uh, you can just run forward. But uh, um, if he's like in this area, just shoot the, just shoot the red barrel. So you don't have to use your pass this early. So this is going to be our first little enemy manip. So make a hard right and rub Leon against this wall, against this, the frame of the door. And then right when, uh, and mash as well. And right when Leon touches this door, um, as you're mashing, he'll kick it. And it will mani uh, manipulate this guy into pointing. If he doesn't point, just shoot him and move forward. If that guy points, go through the first window and do it the way I do it here. Run up run up against these sandbags, take two steps, and then jump forward. Uh, if you're not comfortable doing that, uh, another method is to run up to the sandbags and reload. It's a time loss, but it's the safe way of doing it. If you got hit in factory or canyon, uh, get this green herb. Because there's still uh, a couple more ruins where you could get hit. Another treasure. Passwords 1-3. Right, so this next room, there's a bit of RNG. Yeah. 
These three guys are never a problem. Just follow the line that I do. This guy always points. Okay, so here, uh, this guy can do two different things. He can either run this way, and if he does, he can run straight up the middle. If he goes up the middle, shoot him in the head and just go for a kick. Um, as you get more comfortable with this mob, you can just shoot him and run forward. But I wouldn't recommend doing it until you have more experience with the room. So if he runs straight at you, uh, just shoot him in the head and kick, and it'll, it'll have like a domino effect, and they'll all get knocked back, so... Uh, yeah. Right here, I got a weird pattern where this pitchfork lady takes a, you know, goes left here, so I had to sort of swerve around. If that happens, I really don't know why I took the line this way. I should have went. Normally, you go this way, but, um, but yeah, that's how you deal with that, I guess. This room always plays out the same. I don't think I've ever had a problem with this room. It's very consistent. Now the treasure. Okay, if you still have your first aid or a green herb here, uh, don't sell it. Keep it for cabin. Because um, there's a chance you can get hit in cabin. So, but at this point on, uh, there's a very low chance of you getting damaged by anything. So, But it's good to keep that green herb that I showed you you could pick up in factory. Or if you still have your first aid to keep those. So. The boy is... I don't know if he's... Maybe it was. Yeah. It's all the treasures. Get the rocket launcher. Place it there. Yeah. We're gonna get this grenade. Reload as the grenade drops. And then equip it. So right here, this shot's fairly tricky, so what I like to do is I like to rub up against this gate, and then right when I hit about right here, I like to aim straight up and then go for the, shoot the nest. I think here I miss. I missed once, but you got time for about three shots here. So, kind of stand a bit more forward than I was standing here, and then do it, and you should get it every time. But... Definitely when you're, when you're first starting, kind of take your time with that shot and wait till you see the dot on the nest and then shoot because it may be a little scary. You got the guy with the dynamite here and this dude's rock, walking towards you, but you got plenty of time for this shot. So So this lady always points. These guys always do the same thing. This guy always points. We're going to shoot this bird here. And we're going to shoot the bird right here. He's He has a flash grenade. Um, take your time with this. Uh, if you try to do it too fast, you could end up hitting this bird. They got weird hitboxes. So just take a few seconds and do it properly or, or you'll have to... Uh, Reset the room. All right, here we got another QTE, another boulder for some reason. I don't know why they felt like they needed to put another boulder in, but whatever.
So, another grenade. Alright, so we're going to shoot these two traps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot the first trap, take a small step forward, and then shoot the second trap. And the reasoning for doing that is, um, if you just stand still and uh, let... Um, and just holding the fire button, there's a chance you'll miss that second... This... Uh, the second uh, trap, so it's better just to uh, take one step forward. You'll always hit the uh, the second trap because it's something to do with Leon's recoil or whatever with the gun. I don't know. There's a pretty high chance you'll end up missing the second one if you just stand still and shoot. So, so just like that. And doing it that way, this guy will point most of the time. So, another treasure here. Okay, so Del Lago, Ugh, a lot to explain in this room. So I would make a save. This is one of those rooms where you need to save in and practice, because um, it's a lot trickier than it looks uh, doing this properly. So it takes 11 harpoons to kill Del Lago. Definitely when you're first getting started, the thing you should mainly focus on is just finishing runs, playing through the whole game. Um, not getting too hung up over, you know, one section. So, uh, at first I definitely just do this as fast as you can. Or do the harpoons you feel like you can do. Um, watching this video. If there's a few harpoons you can't feel like you can do yet, um, just don't do them <laughs> yet. <laughs> Especially the, the fifth harpoon where you have to throw in between the logs. I did do that harpoon for a while. Um, so it, you lose, you don't lose that much time. It's a very long, it's a, it's a pretty long speed run. So, uh, you get a lot of wiggle room here, but, uh, um, just do what you can at first. So throw one, give a hard right and let go when this rope um, straightens out. Get one more in. Tap right, tap left. And right here's the trickiest part. I'll slow the video down. So watch this rope here and keep an eye on uh, this part of the screen. Unfortunately my, my timer's kind of So you see when the okay. maybe speed it up a little bit more. So watch the rope. See that ripple there? Right when you see that ripple, you can let go and just go for the harpoon shot, and then make a hard right so you don't hit this log. And that's the hardest part of Del Lago. Also, too, a thing to uh, take note of. Del Lago has uh, three different patterns. Um, the first pattern uh, would be an early dive. So that would be the worst pattern. He'll go for a, uh, the, the long dive here. And you, you have to do that, uh, that whole thing where he comes back up and he's charging at you and Leon's standing in the boat and whatever. Um, if you're lucky he doesn't do that yet and he, and he comes straight back up and you can get four or five more harpoons in and right here um, 
he can do what's called a late dive. He can dive here and then do that whole sequence thing, which eats about, you know, a few seconds. But if he doesn't, um, you get what's called a no dive, where you don't see that at all. If you get all your harpoons in. If you missed a couple of harpoons, um, he'll dive later. But as far as I know, they all, uh, it's like a 33% chance for each one. Anyway, pick up the flash. There's handgun on that table if you need it. If you missed a lot of shots somehow. Just run past these guys. This room is pretty straightforward. Another grenade. I'm gonna shoot the three crates here. Pretty much the same as if you're playing casually. This is the only tricky part of the room. So this, this, ugh, can't ever pause quick enough. So this guy right here always runs forward. You never have to worry about him. These two guys are always standing here idle. Um, these two guys, you have to bait their attack and then run forward. So just do it like that. It's never a problem. If something weird happens there, it's uh, it's uh, it's definitely your fault. I've only had an issue with that room like once or twice, and it was like 100% my fault. Like if I try to get greedy with the pitch for guy and run too early or whatever, get hit. Things like that. So right about here, a cutscene's gonna trigger, and right when that cutscene triggers, you skip it. But um, don't be holding forward anymore. Um, go straight to aiming your weapon, the rocket, and then firing it immediately. Because if you don't do that. Um, fire it immediately or uh, or if you accidentally move forward a little bit after the cutscene uh, it'll put Leon in, rig in, a, in a critical health and you don't want that so uh, yeah. so right when the next cutscene you see I didn't move whatsoever and I immediately equipped the rocket and shot at the El Gigante's knee uh, you'll never have a problem here if you uh, messed up and blew yourself up, you can always grab this red and get the green out of this hut. Or um, probably the faster way is just reset the room because um, it takes a while to travel all the way over here and then all the way over here to get these two. But it's just it's just an option. So. Next two rooms are pretty straightforward.
Just follow my line here. These dogs will never be a problem. The code for the puzzle is 231. Just be careful not to hit a quit. That's like the only danger in this room, really. Now we're gonna get Ashley. Wait. Don't shoot the barrels. Okay, so right here, you can get memed on sometimes. Uh, sometimes this... Uh, man, I hate this task bar at the bottom. It is so freaking annoying. Um, anyway. This torch guy right here could be like super far to the right. And Ashley... When Ashley follows you, she's kind of a little bit to the, to the left of Leon. So she can get stuck behind things. So... If he's like a way over here, I'd make a hard right in a wider line um, so that Ashley doesn't get stuck. But right here, I'm safe just to make a more narrow line. I make it wide anyway because I'm kind of paranoid. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. But this room is, uh,. An issue. So, right here, we're just going to let Leon slowly push the door and walk two steps. One, two, and then go through the door. The reason for that is if you just kick the door and run straight through, Ashley will get stuck behind the door um, that you just kicked, and then she'll have to push it open and you lose about three seconds. Right here, just bait this guy's attack and then run forward. right here uh, Ashley we use it several times throughout the run when you tell her to wait follow the enemies will hear that and it will it will they'll start gravitating towards you and it will uh, uh, set up the room the way we want it so we tell her to wait follow here wait follow me. and then right well, when this guy is out of vision Wait, follow right here. Wait, follow. Um, you don't have to do wait, follow in both sections. This is just the way I do it and the way I'm used to doing it. Um, you can just tell her to wait, follow. Uh, wait, follow. You can just do one wait, follow right here. But uh, yeah. But it doesn't really mean you don't really lose time doing it either way. So it's it's whatever. Wait, follow me. So. Yeah, you should always be good here, like 95%. It's super rare this guy decides to go around the ladder or the guy behind us is super fast, so it's this room is usually never a problem. Wait until you see Ashley's head pop up and then run forward. So you got two options here. You can either take the far left after baiting this guy's attack, which is the safe way, and lose a second. Or you can go straight up the middle, and then right when you see Ashley get close to this trap right here, you tell her to wait, and then hit the door. And that's the, uh, that's the optimal way. So there's two different ways you can do it, just whatever you're comfortable with doing. All right, so Kevin, this is the last um, difficult room in Village. So, uh, let's wait till I equip my handgun. So 
So right here I have one bullet, and having one bullet means I have to reload in cabin. If you only have one bullet or none, I would reload right here. Just for the sake of not making cabin. It's just one less thing you have to think about in cabin. Because if you have to reload in cabin, um, starting out, there's a chance you can screw it up and then mess up the way you need to manipulate Lewis. Because this room is very strict in the way it needs to be uh, played out. And it's fairly difficult to recover if you mess up anything. So I'd recommend just reloading here until you get more comfortable with cabin. Um, and then start doing the reloading cabin when you're more comfortable, obviously. So, um, all right, so now I'll, I'll do it play by play. I'll explain every inch of cabin. <laughs> So right here we're gonna knife Lewis and this uh, these boards at the same time. Are you trying to kill me? Use this. Shotgun shells. We're gonna shoot both of these windows out. So after Lewis shoots five times, listen and make sure he shoots five times, not four, because he needs to kill the the enemy outside the window. And don't. Uh, wait too long to aim at him or he'll start shooting at enemies behind us and it will screw up the room. And right where you hear that, when you hear that guy grunt and he'll always grunt like that behind you. Um, just like that. Uh, run a few steps forward, then stop and aim. Walk. I like to walk forward, not run. Do not run here, then aim, or you'll screw up these two enemies for some reason. Then they'll then they'll hit the torch guy. Will hit um, Lewis, and it will screw up the room. <laughs> There's so many ways to screw this up. Um, definitely make a save and practice this room uh, a lot because it's it's very uh, there's a lot of things can go wrong here. So what I like to do is I like to to walk forward two steps just to get closer to this red herb over here and then aim again then equip the grenade throw it uh, depending on how your inventory is arranged if you still have your first aid here um, Pick up the flash first, then the grenade. If you don't, uh, pick up the grenade first, and then the flash. Knife Lewis two or three times. Pick up the yellow worm. Throw another grenade. And then we're gonna run up to this window, and we're gonna wait till we see this guy spawn. And you can visibly, it, it's gonna be hard to see in this video, but um, you'll see this guy spawn, then throw the grenade. Yeah, the quality of this video is too much. It's really hard to see. And then next, we're gonna pick up the incendiary first, then the heal. The order of picking up those items is very important. Uh, sometimes you get what's called a running plogus where the guy just doesn't get stunned whatsoever, he just turns into a plogus. Um, take a few steps back, like I did here, turn around. Yeah. And just keep firing until it's over. You need uh, 40 kills to uh, end cabin. And it's pretty much uh, luck based at this point. Like you can hear Lewis taking damage, he's not shooting, so less enemies are getting killed as a result. But here I got pretty lucky. Yeah. Yeah, 155 is really good for Cabin. I'd say on average it's usually between a 205 and a 210. And if you're unlucky, it'll end up being like a 220 or something.
Yeah, it's pretty much cabin. And the rest of the village is really, uh, There's not really much left in the village. Pick up all the items in this hut. Follow me. Hitting both of these chains is not hard to do. Just stand where I stand and I. Here you could just mash X. You don't have to go into the inventory and go to key items. You can just mash X on that door. There's a few doors uh, throughout the run where you're able to do that. It would be nice if you could do that with every door, but some doors you have to uh, select the, the key item. So here's just one long auto scroller. Wait. But basically, we're just going to be wasting all of our handgun ammo. I like to switch the mouse here. Especially if I feel like I'm low on handgun ammo. Um, I switch the mouse. Shoot till you have seven bullets left. That's the way I like doing it. So I like to have at least seven bullets for a truck. Follow me. And your inventory should look something close to this. It will vary. The incendiaries will vary. But your flashes should look something close to this. Or this flash should be over here. Uh, but you should have a flash in the corner. If it ain't, uh, move it over one till it's in the corner. So yeah. And your herbs. Uh, your herbs should always look like this in a line. Very rarely, sometimes the game will put a flash in between your herbs. I don't know why that happens. It's extremely annoying if it does. But if that happens, you have to move it back over here in this slot or this slot. So. Yeah, it's just unlucky. Sometimes the inventory is just weird in this game. Yeah. So with Mendez, we're going to be using four incendiary grenades plus a red barrel to kill him. And it's really straightforward. It's pretty hard to mess up. It's pretty self-explanatory too if you just watch. Wait. It's really not much to explain. It's really it's not like Del Log or Cabin. So throw it immediately. Pick up this incendiary. Throw another one. Throw this one right away, run to this corner, and throw it about right here. I'll show that one more time. That's the trickiest throw. Yeah, throw it uh, around where this flame is, um, along this side of the this eye beam here, so that when he jumps down, um, he'll get hit. He'll get hit by the the red barrel and the incendiary, and it will it'll finish him off. Pick up the eye first, and then the money. Are you okay, Leon? And then we're all more on our way to castle. I think this will be under an hour, which is nice. I think the last time I did this, it was like an hour and a half or whatever. Did 
that when we get to castle, that's when it picks up quite a bit. Village is pretty, uh, I don't know. It's pretty straightforward. Castle is when things get a bit more, get a bit more interesting, a bit more crazy. This next room, uh, I guess there's a little bit to explain here. Wait. So, stop about right here, but not too far forward where you bait these guys, or if you grow. Try to shoot this guy in the head. If you can't shoot him in the head, uh, just shoot the truck like, I think it's six times or five times, I can't remember. Exactly, so. So that's, that's why I like to have at least seven bullets here. So if I'm having a hard time hitting the guy in the head, you'll still blow up the truck either way. If there's money, I don't pick up the money because I'm trying to go for my pest village here. This is the first time I got a 21. But if you see money there, pick it up. All right, and that's village. Um, but yeah, that'll do it for this video. Uh, if you have any questions, you can leave in the comment below, or better yet, um, you can join the RE4 Discord and ask in there. It's a very active uh, community, so pretty much right when you post a question, somebody's gonna answer you pretty quickly. So um, it's better just to to uh to ask in there um if there's anything you liked about the this tutorial you know leave a comment that'd be nice any criticisms are welcome anything i could do better um as far as these guys go um this is definitely something i'd like to do more in the future but uh but yeah i'll be i'll be doing there will be a castle video and an island video um, as well, so look out for those. But yeah, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you in the castle part. Alright, peace.